Marama is the old name, the Māori name for the moon. And the moon is, in many ways, one of the most powerful influences in our lives today. And yet, its power is unseen and unrecognised by so many. And that's a tragedy. I think it's a very sad thing at this world today. We've forgotten something that is still filling our lives with energy. It's something to be used. If we step into that place of awareness, where we call on the moon, work with the moon, to gather energy within the moon tides. When I speak of the moon tides, I speak of two great pulses that exist in a lunar month, which is about 28 days long. One pulse is a very powerful, energetic pulse that lasts for 14 days. And the other pulse is a pulse that is much gentler, the pulse of reflection, the pulse where you gather your strength for the huge energy of those 14 days of the great outward pulse, the pulse of energy that's gifted by the moon. 14 days, well, looks at the 14 days, let us look at the 14 days of what I call the bright moon. The seven days before the full moon and the seven days after. You know, many societies are aware of the fact that something happens for many people around the full moon. In fact, we've got a, a very distorted uh, description of what happens because we call people who, who respond to the lunar energy of the full moon, we call them lunatics. And that's a very, um, yeah, very disrespectful way, of, a, a very ignorant way, if you will, of, of looking at that power. Because yes, it affects many, many people, and there is a huge heightened awareness around the time of the full moon. But it's an awareness and energy that was harnessed by many of the ancestors in many lands from long, long ago. It's an energy that has been, uh, it's been implanted in, in our very being, within our genes, over eons of time. We just respond to the power of the moon. And not just us. You know, the sap rises in the trees to the power of the moon. Uh, seeds break open and, uh, and, and they, they take root to the power of the moon. Fish feed at certain times of the power of the moon. And, and those things are incorporated in, in indigenous life. Our under, ancestors understood these things. They lived their life within these two great pulses of a lunar month. So to return to that 14 days of power, from the beginning of the moon time when we can only see half of the moon, although strange to say it's called the first quarter, because we can't see the rest. But we see half of the moon in the sky and it starts waxing, it starts building towards the full moon. In those seven days, there is a huge energy that can be harnessed by everyone in their awareness. But if you're unaware of it, you simply don't know what's going on. Sometimes you'll hit it by chance, and amazing things will happen in that time of 14 days. But others, it becomes so much, uh, so, so put aside by the static in life, by the things that intervene between us and the universe, that it simply goes by. I actually put a lot of stress in society today, a lot of, uh, of unease and difficulty that people face. I put it down to the fact that we don't use these tides of the moon in a good way. So let's look at what one would do in the time of the bright moon, the time when the energy begins to flow and rise and reach its peak on the full moon and then quietly wane. 
Well, in the indigenous world, if we speak of the Polynesian world, the world of the Māori, the people of New Zealand, of Aotearoa, that's when they would do the very difficult things in life. That's when they hold their wānanga, their great schools of learning, and gather those who are to carry the sacred knowledge into the next generation. That's when they gather. That's when they are taught, because it's a time when the mind is lifted into a higher place. It's a time of huge learning. It's a precious time, a vital time for the future of the people. So they do their wānanga at that time, but they also take on incredibly difficult journeys at that time. That's when they bring the the sacred stone we know as the Ponamu. They bring that over the mountains, right across the passes, sometimes still covered in snow. They bring it over in the summertime, but the snow lingers. And they go through those passes in the power of the moon, carrying the sacred stone. The stone that holds the mana, the spirit of aroha, of love, of healing, the stone that is made into the most precious of tools, stone tools made of jade that is so, so strong, so tough that you need diamonds to cut it today. But that's also the time when they made their great voyages on their double-hulled walker, their great canoes, some of which had a crew of uh, over 170. That's when they used the stars to chart them across the ocean, to go beyond the distant horizons, travelling sometimes for the whole time, the 14 days of that moon, and, and if they had difficulties, even beyond. But the journey is made in the power of the moon. That's when they made their great gardens, when they had to clear a new, a new place and they had to remove the trees and, and turn the soil. And everyone gathered to that occasion. It was such an important time. It's when they dug the canals within the estuaries to, to help them harness their skills at fishing in a good way. And the skills for taking birds in the season, the ducks. So it was a very powerful thing to work in that time of the moon with a huge tide lifting not only the spirit but the mind and providing physical strength to carry you forward. So that's the time when so much that really mattered was done. A time of challenge time met with great strength and courage. And then we come to the other 14 days of the moon. And that's the time of what you might call the quiet moon. It's a time of reflection. It's a time to think about the things that you've done and the, and the, the energy of the bright moon and what needs to come. It's a time to tend to relationships, to nurture relationships, to gather close in that way. It's a time that the elders described as the time to cuddle beneath the blankets. It's a time to quietly plan the way ahead. In that time, you don't try to meet enormous challenges. You wait on the tides of the full moon. You wait upon the powerful tides, the energy that comes at that time. I once I went to Kaitaia on the North Island and, and gave a, a talk there and, and, and mentioned the moon and it was fascinating to find that uh, at the end of the talk an old couple who had now retired had spent many, many years travelling the oceans in their, in their yacht through the Pacific and going ashore in South America and spending time with quite remote communities, with the indigenous people. 
and they they shared that they had been with one group in the mountains in this in South America had been there for several months and they came to a time when they had realized that there was one day in every month when the people did nothing before that day they prepared their food they gathered their wood they got their water and on that day when they did nothing they simply sat around the fire and told stories and eventually when they asked them why don't you work on this day they simply smiled and said to them how can we work on this day there is no moon there is no moon so in that quiet time there is a night when there is no moon there is a time when the moon is not there to give us light we of course in the western world today we tend to celebrate and it's happened everywhere of course to celebrate the arrival of the new moon and we put a great emphasis upon that and that's a lovely thing because it makes us realize that from ancient times people waited on the return of the moon because of its power because of its place in their life and i suppose there was a time when people thought that maybe it won't come back again you know, it's like the return of the sun each day and it's something that many indigenous peoples over thousands of years have honoured by, by standing there, by rising early to greet the first light of the sun and welcome it back into their lives. So the moon has power and it's with us every day. And our lives get so messed up at this time that we... We don't understand these rhythms that have been created and sown, these ancient tides that are simply part of us. Those who might understand it more readily would be women because what the elders call the seed tides of the women, that time of menstruation, that time in indigenous societies always came around the bright moon, around the fullness of the moon. And all of the women, all of the women in the tribe would come to that seed time at the same time. They were aligned. They were aligned to the power of the moon. And that doesn't happen today unless women gather in hostels and, and, and in institutions that bring them together again. And we don't know why it is that they realign. Otherwise, it seems they're all over the place because we've lost that connection. We've uh, forgotten that connection to the moon and are distracted by so much in life. The things I call the static that get in, gets in the way. But life demands much of us around the power of the moon. There's so much that intervenes to make it difficult for us to have that awareness. In the cities we can't even see the stars at night. And in some places, we really can't ever see the moon. Uh, we've been in places in Europe and elsewhere, in China, where you just never see the moon. There's too much pollution and dust in the air for that to be true. You live without the sight of the moon. But if we're in our Western world, for instance, or anywhere else, if you, if you wish, um, so much of a of us is so much is asked of us from day to day that it's hard to focus beyond the immediate it's hard to look beyond to the skies at night and to understand where the moon is and because it's simply out of sight out of sight and out of mind but in this kind of situation in the modern society of production and bonuses and creating more goods to consume. This global race to make more and more and more to somehow stay in the same place. This causes huge stress to people because we're again and again asked to do incredibly difficult things in the quiet moon. And if we push and push ourselves to achieve what's asked of us, to reach the target bonus or whatever, if we make huge commitment to that with energy that truly isn't there, 
Then we come to the time of the bright moon, we have little to give. So we're pushing against the quiet time, the quiet moon, and then we're trying to gear up again when the energy starts to come. But we're messed up, and I think there's a lot of stress in that. We're not aligned, we're out of balance, we're out of tune with our very being, with what's been sown in us, deep inside the seeds of the ancients that have been there over eons of time that have brought us to that place, of brought them to the place of working with the moon, of honouring the power of the moon in their lives day by day.